All right, well, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Chelsea Anthony. Uh, welcome to District 8 Town Hall Address. We're super excited to have everyone here today. Um, for those who do not know, I did kind of induce myself and work the room earlier um, before we everyone did start to come in. Uh, I am D Councilman Nettles, new district director. My name is Chelsea Anthony. Super excited to be here. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. So much love I've already received. Some associations I do see here. And can we have some hands wave for associations that are here in the house today? Okay, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So excited to see some of you. Some of you I have met. Some of you I have not had the pleasure of meeting as of yet, but I will soon be able to meet everyone. Um, again, thank you all for coming. Um, my name is Chelsea, so I did pass out some cards. I will leave some cards as well in the front. So feel free to reach out to me, contact me. I am accessible. Um, I am for the people. Uh, definitely happy to be a part of District 8 and working with Councilman Chris Nettles. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. I want to go ahead and um, introduce our man for the evening, Councilman Chris Nettles. All right, good evening, everybody. So I want to say, first of all, I want to say thank you for coming. Then also, I want to say, I'm sorry the cab was about to play. So I'm going to try to get you out as soon as possible. But listen, the game doesn't get good into the fourth quarter anyway. You know, so, so <laughs> all right. Well, we're, we're not here to talk about the Cowboys. Okay, all right. So, um, what's up? First, I want to thank you and God's permission uh, for allowing us to be here in this wonderful facility and the CEO that's here today. Y'all, let's give it up for him. Uh, they have prepared some light refreshments and water and stuff here. Then I want to take the opportunity to thank our city staff who's been here. I see our assistant city manager, uh, William, uh, William here. Uh, David Cook, I did see him. And we got other city staff that is here as well. So I want to thank you. Uh, for being here. So we'll move swiftly. What we plan to do is go through these slides pretty quickly and then have a small fireside chat to allow the community to ask some questions. So we have one of our great historians that's in the house today, Mr. Bob Ray Sanders, is right here. And so if you want to know anything that has happened in Fort Worth, you need to ask him. Uh, we got some more historians as well. Uh, uh, Judge Hicks is in the house today as well. And so quickly, I'm going to have to Chelsea, where are you? Okay, I need you to help on the slides. Oh, you're taking pictures. All right, so again, I try to introduce myself as Councilman Nettles. I serve on so many uh, committees here in Fort Worth, Texas Wesleyan University, the Trinity Metro uh, board member, Fort Worth Rotary, N National Black Coxes, uh, Texas Association Black Council member, uh, Fort Worth Black Chamber of Commerce, and the Fort Worth Tarrant County NAACP. All right. Uh, also, so we have some uh, some uh, community some community organizations here. So Southeast Fort Worth Inc., who helps do development in the Southeast Quarter. We have Southside Community Center here, VIP Fort Worth, Mr. Uh, Bishop Ro uh, Rodney McIntosh, Palladium USA, Braver Together, and we have so many city staffs that's here. Uh, so I hope you guys have visited those tables. If you didn't get a chance to do it now, you can after we finish. I'm sorry, Southside Community Garden. Oh, I think I have it right on the slide. All right, but I'm moving swiftly. So, um, so let's talk about what are the things that we have been doing. So Evans and Rosedale has been one of the main focuses that we wanted to bring to District 8. When I got elected, uh, it was on a stop. It was actually dead. And so we brought it back. We had some difficulties. And so now we are excited to announce uh, that we went through a whole new RFEI, which this process allowed us to get more information through finances and what they can bring to the city of Fort Worth, which we was unable to do the first time around. And so we're excited that on yesterday, well, last month, we uh, went into a contract with Royal Capital. And so on yesterday, they was here talking about their plans. They came and listened to the community. One of the things you'll find out about me, and that's why I'm having a town hall today is, Number one, I'm not afraid to talk to the people. Not afraid to come into the community so that we can hear concerns and have those tough conversations. And so on yesterday, we had Royal Capital talking about how they're gonna make sure 
that they can bring equity, uh, equality, and es especially uh, mixed use and housing to our Evans and Rosedale quarter. Those of you who will talk to that, the Evans and Rosedale is really one of our heartbeats of our black communities. And so we'll talk about that later in our fireside chat. So some of the next steps, the meet and greet developer block party is going to be September uh, the 25th from 5 to 7. So sign up for that. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. It's going to be October the 23rd. So community vision sessions um, is October the 23rd. It's right up in there where it says meet the developer. Um, go back. Yeah, right there. October the 23rd. And so you'll get a chance to come out and actually see some of the renderings or some of the things, ideas, nothing is set in stone. You can kind of pick, you can kind of ask questions, you can kind of talk to it. It's a visionary opportunity. Next slide. National Juneteenth Museum has made a request to the city of Fort Worth. Some of you have, may have already seen this in articles and it is very important to me that we bring and we be very uh, transparent in this process. The city of Fort Worth has not made any type of recommendations, have not agreed to anything. This is a simple request that the Juneteenth, National Juneteenth Museum has made to the city of Fort Worth. So I wanna talk about that request tonight. Next slide. So the National Juneteenth is requesting a proposal for a long-term lease of Southside Community Center property. In short, form, in short form, they want to put the museum on the Southside Community Center property. And so we have received the Neighborhood Association uh, approval letter. But as I explained with uh, our city management team, is this is a bigger conversation that we have to have. Uh, about, number one, where are those programs going to go that are in the Southside Community Center? Number two, is there or will there not be another Southside Community Center built? But number three, um, that the community is full support with this process. And so you will see our next community meet will be October the 28th. And this is going to be a big community meeting. So I'm asking you to tell your friends and your family. So I don't want you to wake up one morning and you see the city went into a contract to take Southside Community Center and you say you didn't know about it. So I want you to write it down today. I'm not on one side or the other. We're going to have a conversation because I want to make sure that our community has the necessary needs that they need. And so Southside Community Center has been there for many years. Those that have been there, it's kind of need some improvements. And so we got to have a real conversation about that. Yeah, yes. And so we'll continue on. Um, so some of the things that we have been doing is community development. So we have helped with permanent support of housing, 125 units. In the Journey Homes, we'll talk about in just a few minutes, Columbia Renaissance and the Overland Property Group. And the Journey Homes are now underway. I passed by their crowd the other day, and I believe they're actually building. We'll take questions at the very end, so hold them for me. Oh, got an amen in the audience. All right, got an amen in the audience. All right, and so, next slide. That's great. Palladium USA. Uh, Palladium East Bear did they, it has a grand opening coming up uh, on November the 21st. This is one of the first projects we did in, in this um, office. And let me tell you why housing is so important. What? We talk about grocery stores, we talk about restaurants, and we talk about economic development. Talk about dollars. In order to get dollars coming into our communities and our cities, we have to have rooftops that can actually support the grocery store and the restaurants. And so it is very important to me that we build infrastructure for homes, apartments, for all of, all of Fort Worth. Some people like homes, some people like apartments. 
And so this is what our goal has been in District 8, and especially affordable housing as well. This is a tax credit property. And so I have encouraged all of our council members to be a part of the process and making sure that we have affordable housing. It's their mic. This the mic. We're going to work through it. Affordable housing um, throughout the city of Fort Worth. So we have recently just um, went through our budget, $2.79 million, billion, 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 billion. And so I really want to take time out to, again, thank our staff, um, our city management team for this process. This is always a rigorous process of trying to make sure that everyone gets the dollars. And so I'm not going to go in depth, but there's a couple of sides we'll uh, kind of go through. Number one, we kept, we kept the tax rate the same. So when people tell you that the city of Fort Worth has raised your taxes, I need you to say, listen, I'm seeing in, let me fact check you. That is not true. Okay. Right. The appraisals went up, but the city of Fort Worth has kept your tax rate the same. You can look there, some of the uh, general stuff that we did in the uh, police department, uh, adding six officers, sergeants. Um, one thing we know that public safety is one of our root grounds of making sure we have a safe and a vibrant city. And so please know that your council continues and will continue to support our police department. We're also getting ready to bring emergency medical services in-house. And so some of you that has been following, maybe you have not been following, uh, but MedStar uh, will, will go away and the emergency medical system will come in-house. And so that's gonna be a big change for Fort Worth, but it's important to us that you get the care that you need in a timely fashion and with excellence. And so uh, there was a lot of conversation that happened with that. You can see some of our city management team here tonight to go in depth of why we got to that um, decision. They're gonna start operating in July, 2025. Something changes, we'll let you know. We have continued to support our neighborhood improvement program. And I see a lot of uh, uh, citizens who can benefit from the neighborhood improvement program. So I really want you to make sure if you don't know what they do, they, we do repairs to homes um, for seniors, those who qualify. And also what we also do, we adopt a neighborhood throughout the city of Fort Worth to bring in dollars to bring that community back up. We have done it at Ash Crescent, done it in uh, Stop Six, Como, and some other areas. And so please know where your dollars are going. And we'll kind of go through to the next slide. Other economic development has continued in District 8. Our office have worked with uh, Mark Vesey on the federal level to bring dollars right here in District 8. Uh, here recently, we did a, a check a signing, a check a presentation for $800,000 to the Renaissance Heights for Happy Park. So those that don't know where that is, that is right there behind Walmart on uh, Barry and Mitchell. And so we're continuing to bring investment into our community. Uh, also, Southside Community Garden received $500,000 to continue to do their work and bring in fresh pro produce in the backs and the homes of our neighborhoods, as well as they're going to be planning to do an actual community garden. Uh, they were scheduled to be here, but there was a mercy that came up tonight. Oh, you here? Okay, we got, we got representatives here. All right. All right. So um, we have people who are doing fantastic work in District 8. And what I'd like to tell you is the city of Fort Worth is big on private-public partnerships. That's how we thrive. That's how we move forward. It's not always city dollars, but we tap into federal dollars. We tap into private dollars. We tap into uh, rainwater, nonprofit dollars, so that we can make sure that you have the best quality of life. Other development that's happening. We're excited about uh, the Livingston Community Development Foundation uh, that's getting ready to transform the old Vickery School. 
uh, at 1905 East Victory School. We have been working with them for some time now, and we have crossed another hurdle. And so we're excited about that, that they're going to transform that. That area has been blighted for some time now, homeless, ransacked, and everything else. Uh, we're going to bring that community back together. And so we, we're grateful for that partnership. Also, Braver Together has a new location. They have transformed the old fire station, Senior Fellowship Corner uh, at North, uh, 1601 New York Avenue. This was a uh, workable deal that we worked with the city of Fort Worth. They have been tasked to look at our quarter to see how we beautify the quarter between Evans and Rosedale. And so uh, we're in a partnership deal with them. Lastly, here's some contact information uh, from our offices. Those are our numbers. Uh, that's actually Chelsea's cell number. She actually calls people back and answer her calls when we're in meetings. So she stepped away. And I'm like, no, nah, just come back over here. And so she's doing a fantastic job. So thank you so much, Chelsea Flora. She started, what was it, in July? July 7th. July 7th. And she has come on rocking and rolling. And so y'all can give it up for her. <laughs> so these are some of the things that we can actually point to and talk about what we have done at this council office. So now we're going to get ready for our fireside chat. Mr. Stacy Marshall is going to come up and facilitate this. A couple of questions, and then we'll take questions from the audience uh, about any concerns that you may have. You can ask questions of myself, by Ray, city staff, uh, anybody that's here. So let's give it up for Mr. Stacy Marshall as he comes up. Good evening. Am I on? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So it's my job to put Barbara Sanders and Councilman Nettles in the hot seat. We came up with like 17 questions, but we cut them down to a couple of couple questions per person just to get the thing started. Yes, Miss Mary Ellen, yes, we, we cut it out. Because we want to get to you guys because you're the most important people in the room right now because you want to know a lot of things. So, how are we going to do it? You want, Bob Ray, come on up. Let's get you a chair. I get Come on, come on, come on get you. This is the hot seat. This is the hot seat. Okay. All right. <laughs> Wherever you want to sit. All right. And I'll pass you the mic. All right, question number one. Well, first of all, thank you guys for being here. So it's for you, Councilman Nettles. What keeps you up at night and what makes you sleep well at night after a hard day work at the new city hall um, downtown? Well, um, what keeps me up at night is making sure that our residents have the best quality of life. I would tell you 76104 uh, several years ago was deemed the lowest life expectancy in Texas. And that is very critical to the lives of not our seniors, but to the lives of our young people. And so it's gonna affect possibly my generation and the generation that come underneath me. And so it's important to me is that we try to fix that. And how do we fix that? Is making sure they have access to uh, medical care, access to fresh produce, access to get back and forth to their doctor's offices. Um, and that's critical um, here in, on the east side. Uh, we know uh, that we used to have doctor's offices on Edmonds Avenue. And as the economy has changed, and as uh, you see a lot of doctor's offices now in the plazas of hospitals. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have transportation to get across 35, and some of you may believe it or not, but it's a barrier for some people who don't have transportation. Uh, but what allows me to sleep at night is that I have a beautiful family at home, my eight-year-old daughter. And so she makes me have so much joy when I come home. So when some of the people fussing at me, she reminds me that I'm still a good person. So they have to be sleeping. Okay. People actually fuss at you. Yes. Oh, okay. So I'm going to flip the script and give you the same question, Bob Ray. You've been around for a long time. We know you love Fort Worth. What is your passion that you want to see happen, particularly Stop 6 and the east side of Fort Worth? Well, uh, first of all, let me uh, echo what Chris was saying about 
the uh, life expectancy, 76104, the zip code, 10 years less life expectancy than the average Texan in one zip code. And in that zip code, we have four major hospitals. That's the irony to me. I mean, that's what I can't, can't understand. But for me, in terms of Fort Worth, I used to play on the courthouse steps when my mother shopped at Leonard Brothers. I used to go inside the courthouse. And inside the courthouse, you would see white and colored signs on the restrooms and um, in there. And, and George, you know what I'm talking about, uh, on the restrooms and over the water fountains. And then I wondered, even at early, I'm talking about eight years old, I'm wondering, wait a minute, if they do this on the outside of the courtroom, what are they doing inside the courtroom? So criminal justice has been a major part. And as we know, we just had another incident here in, in Fort Worth where we got somebody who's been accused of shooting somebody again. That, that bothers me. So, I mean, I've been covering those kind of things all my life, but when you talk about South, Stop Six and my great-grandmother, Amanda Davis, was the first black person to buy property in what is now Stop Six. So I have an attachment to Stop Six, even though I never lived there. But it's part of Fort Worth, so it's part of me. And what I really, you know, as, as a representative of the Black Chamber of Commerce, what I really hate to see is when we lose our black businesses, and we lost a lot. The beauty of Fort Worth was that, unlike most southern cities and Texas cities, we didn't have just one black community. We had bunches of black communities in every quadrant of the city and in and, and the other places, like Riverside, for me, uh, Greenway. We had all of those places, and we had business districts in all of those areas. And integration came, and most of the businesses went away. Now we're trying to get them back. And that's what we're looking to you to help us do, and that's what you've been doing, and we appreciate that. All right, thank you for that. So I am, I'm with Southeast Fort Worth. We're housed in the DeVore D. Jennings Business Assistance Center that has been renamed, everybody know D, from its history at the Fort Worth Black Chamber. So hypothetically speaking, if we get a new tenant who comes into the assistant, Business Assistance Center and they create a module that gives us 50 years looking into the future. What do you want your legacy to be, Bob Ray, and what do you want your legacy to be, Councilman Nettles? Wait. In the city of Fort Worth. Sure. Um, I will tell you, and we kind of had this conversation, I think uh, actually Mayor Parker talk, touched on this um, a couple of weeks ago at a, a luncheon. You know, it's it's important that for me that District Eight, which is a community that I was born and raised in, Morningside went to Morningside Elementary School, um, understand the dynamics that it has the same life value that any other part of Fort Worth. And I will tell you that, and this is not to discredit the growth in other areas, but we're here to talk about Southeast and. One of the things I ran on was the fact that we have had so much major development and money infusion west of Fort Worth, west of 35. And so when you talk about South Main, their development, walkability, sidewalks, curbs, and gutters, uh, Magnolia, Transform, the hospital district, uh, 7th Street, um, the uh, museum district, a cultural district. But when you cross over to 35, the areas that we used to call our vibrant locations or the Black Wall Street does not exist. So what does 50 years down the road looks like when I get out this seat? It's going to be before 50 years, I tell you. Um, That's good. Um, but you're going to see a transformation. You're going to see businesses come back. This is a major project for Evelyn Rosedale. And I will tell you, um, one of the things that I wanna make sure is that uh, black and brown also have opportunities to make money uh, economically and with contracts and with the MWBE process. And this is very important to us is because some of us 
and our communities are not able to live and thrive to pour back into our communities. And so if you want, you want people, uh, communities to go to college and come back and move back into the neighborhoods. But in order to do that, you gotta fix the crime. We gotta deal with our education gaps. Uh, we have to deal with our economics so that people can feel safe to come back, as you say, back to stop six, back to Morningside. We have other developers who are building $300,000 homes right there in the historic South Side. We got to make sure that we clean it up so that it's a place that they can live and thrive. Yeah, one of the saddest things for me to see on the South Side, Stop Six, Como, when many of the people who originally owned those homes died or went away, their kids didn't keep the property. I mean, how long did we have vacant lots all over South Side? And we still got them. Now, I, I drive around now and I see more housing going up. I see a few businesses going up. But we lost a generation of, of, of housing and land ownership right here in the South Side. We're just now trying to get some of that back. So in terms of legacy, I'm thinking of 50 years from now, and y'all know I won't be here, uh, but 50 years from now, I hope that I can drive through the South Side, because when I drive through now, a lot of the black folk have moved out. I, I want to see black people living back on the south side. I want to see, I, I do. But I mean, I, I'm not sure that's going to happen because Eat it. other people are buying the property. Okay, yeah. I'm Now, nothing against other people buying property. If, if you got the money to buy property and you want to live close to downtown, which a lot of us want to do. <clears throat> but the truth is, we went to the suburbs. See, you gave up the land. Yeah. I want to see it vibrant again. I, that's what I want to see. And I think it can. But it's got to be visionary. You know, and I, and I, I can say this. Black people pass all the bond issues in forward. Y'all know that, don't you? When they have a bond issue, they put one or two little things on there for black people. And then another billion dollars worth of something else for everybody else. The bond issue passes. We can't now get on you. And we don't get very much. And I'm, I'm saying that to my council member over here to let him know that we expect something in those bond issues. And we can do that. Uh, visionary is what I'm talking about. Yeah, we can do that. And we, so we have the bond getting ready to come up in 2026. And we're going to actually start that process. So, uh, and I'll tell you this as it relates to uh, maintenance and streets. We have two systems. We, we do the bond system which are major projects. So to rehab an entire street has to go through a bond. Now, we also have PACO, which we can repair and fix. But I will tell you that we have a great staff. We have a huge staff, but they're not driving through your neighborhood every day. You're driving through your neighborhood. And so I say that to say, hold us accountable, but also let us know where the issues are and that's either emailing me, my office, and that's also emailing um, city staff. If you have not downloaded the My Fort Worth app, I want you to download it tonight. That gets you directly into the system of whatever issue that you are having at that time, and city staff can start helping you right away. Okay, my last question, and we're going to get to the audience. So I said I was going to put you in the hot seat, and that's a great segue. You talked about Bob Ray. We talked about this earlier. We look to the city to the east called Dallas. We look to Houston. They've had one as well. Is the city of Fort Worth ready for an African-American or a Hispanic or Latino mayor? And if when do you think that will happen? Um, our, well, first of all, it should have already happened. Real? Can I get an amen somewhere? It should have already happened. Uh, but the truth of the matter is there are people in Fort Worth who do think that Fort Worth is not ready for a black anything in power. I, I've, I've been there. We, we had a superintendent, we had an assistant superintendent who was black, and when the other superintendent was leaving, we thought for sure that we would have that person in closed session, and I know it was in closed session because somebody came out of closed session and told me, 
that at the time, the, super, the head of the school board said, Fort Worth was not ready for a black superintendent. They didn't hire him and he went down to New Orleans. <laughs> Same thing happened with city manager. When there was a time, well, Vernell Stearns had gone out and saved the airport. Came in as an assistant city manager, acting city manager, should have been the city manager. Of course, Bob Terrell came along a little later, but there were people then saying Fort Worth was not ready for a black city manager. Well, guess what? We're about to get another city manager. And I can tell you that there are at least three or four people that I can name who happens to be black <clears throat> who can definitely fill that job. Yeah. Now, we will hear that Fort Worth is not ready for a black city manager again. As for mayor, you specifically said, <clears throat> and I, I don't blame the system for not wanting us. I don't blame the system for saying we're not ready for it. The truth of the man, are we ready for it? That's the question. Because if, if we say that, hey, we want a black person to be mayor, and a black person runs, and then we sit home and don't vote, you can't blame that on the, on the folk downtown. That's, that, that blame is on us. So, yes, Fort Worth is ready, but I ask the question, are we? Mom, please. Yeah. And, and and the same question for you, Councilman, if you can wrap it up in a minute and 30 seconds. Yeah. Never give a pastor a mic. First, I want to okay. actually uh, appreciate the work that our current mayor is doing for the city of Fort Worth. I uh, also appreciate the work that our city manager is doing in the city of Fort Worth. And I will tell you, um, when the manager came on the hills, our, our budget system was in a wreck. And we was able to fix that. But as Bob Ray Sanders says, we are ready. Don't let nobody tell you we're not ready. Uh, this is a very urban and vibrant city. It's a very diverse city, a uh, black, brown, white, Caucasian, uh, Indian, Asian, you call it, you name it. This city is ready. What happens is we fail to be a part of the process. And I will tell you that I don't know when the emails went out, but we sent out probably 8,000 emails to tell people about the town hall. And you can look at the number of people that's here tonight. And that's no disrespect to anybody else, but once you know something, you have to do something about it. And so we are getting ready to go through uh, a process to um, our city manager is leaving. We're gonna get ready to go through a, a process. And you can look on the city website right now that the city manager position is available, it is open. And I want to encourage you and, and please keep us transparent. Stay in tune with the process. Find out what's going on when these meetings are happening, who has applied, who hasn't applied, so that you can hold our feet to the fire, that not only that we get somebody that's credible, but somebody that's gonna work for our needs, for all of Fort Worth, not just one portion. And I would tell you, there's a lot of infrastructure that needs to happen in North Fort Worth, but there's a lot of infrastructure that needs to happen in East Fort Worth. And so uh, we have a lot of work to do. And so we're ready for any, for any uh, task. Uh, and so thank you for that question. So I want to take some questions from the audience. I'll take questions from the floor. If you just raise your hand, I'll bring you the microphone. Uh, me... I will say in the last three years since you've been in office, Councilman Nettles had the most ribbon cuttings and ground breakings than any other city council member that has been in that seat. So I'm gonna start with this young lady here and sir, I'll come with you, okay? Uh, we've talked about everything, but I don't see what we address and all this stuff, the homeless. What are we gonna do with the homeless? They are back in the community, they need help. Um, I'm not saying that they're getting the help that they need. So I will tell you in one of those slides where I talked about uh, permanent supportive housing, that is an, an address to the homeless population. And um, my office have worked hand in hand with our um, city staff on getting our homeless off the street. And I will tell you, Union Gospel Mission has been doing great work right here. Uh, Presbyterian Night nice Shelter has been doing great work. This is a nation problem. Uh, and I will tell you, uh, some say that they load them up in East, 
and bring them, ship them right down here to Fort Worth and drop them off. Uh, we have to do a better job. The mayor sits on a, uh, a committee or a board with Arlington, Grandpa, and other mayors to figure out the homeless situation. And I will tell you, this is a problem that integrated, and you probably can answer this question, that integrated many years ago. We should not have had all of the homeless shelters in this quarter. Yep. It happened before I was born and probably some other people before they were born. But we, we have a problem, uh, and it's going to take private dollars, it's going to take city dollars to fix that issue. Well, this is what council does. We the last time we've been on Oregon and in Dirt, well, between New York and Gibbons. Uh, Jane that was business there is former of uh, the white men Gibbons. They're cleaning the red across the street. But when the last time we've been on Oregon? When the last time I've been on Image and what else on the street? All the other street, all the other right by the cleaners and ship. Oh, yeah, I was, I has been over there this past week. Yeah. Yes, son. Oh, what's your name, sleep? Well, we see a lot of stuff. Is there a particular question? Sleep. Well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into that kind of what that I see, but if there's a particular question that you want to refer to ask me. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I'll answer for you. So, Councilman, we had a meeting with the owner of the Connex building, which y'all call the shipping container. His name is Matthias Melkors, and he's had a problem with homeless people encampments over in that area. So, Councilman sent me over there personally. So, I do the economic development in this region. He sent me over there to take a look at that with Matthias and talk about what the options would be, and we're working for that solution right now. So, I know exactly where you're coming from because we've had code compliance come out and clean them out, and the next day they're back. And so we're trying to come up with a solution that we can get the NPO and other officers that can make a routine uh, run through that area, whatever, to keep that place cleaned out. If you're addressing the homeless piece, correct? But then we need to move out. He's talking about the history house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Use the mic for the audience, please. Right. And that's what we said. We need a specific question. We, we're yeah. not going to. He's, he's talking about the three houses the that's on Oleander Street. That's right down from the Connex building. Mm -hmm. The guy that used to live there, I believe, passed away, right? So the daughter of this individual, the daughter didn't even know he passed away because she lives out of state. So what's happening right there is that you have the homeless that has overran it. Mm -hmm. is, they're there consistently all day, and it's a nuisance to the neighborhood. So it's so much going on there. They're camping out of there. They have. Over homes back there, they are trashing it, it's a carbon fire. So it's a deuces on a daily basis. So if you drive through there, you can't help but to see it. Uh -huh. So if they're going through there, they need to, I think the city should either today decide from a historic standpoint, if they're gonna tear it down, if they're not gonna tear it down, they need to empty it out, board it up where nobody can have access. And I think that will alleviate the question that he's trying to ask. And I will ask, and I will answer this because we do have code compliance in the house. Have we reported that issue to to? Okay, paper report. Okay, and so what we'll do, we'll get those addresses tonight, and we will uh, work towards a solution on that. The thing about working with the working in a in, in the structure of a city, it takes a minute. You can't happen. It doesn't happen overnight. But we're working on the plan to make that happen because you told me to do that. Sure. You have a question back here. I don't have a question. I just wanted to make a comment uh, in regard to the homeless situation. The city has many programs for the homeless, um, housing, uh, where they can receive mental health, whatever their need is. Here's the thing. It's not going to happen with just the city. And it's going to take, I believe, the community, the city as, as a whole, because one thing about it, those programs are there. Many of the homeless know that, but they have to be willing to accept 
the programs. And, and if they're not willing to accept the programs and come in and receive the help that they need, we have a reoccurring problem. So I think that, that is a, a goal, a solution we have to come up with, with getting them to uh, accept the programs. You, we can't force them, you know, to go to, you know, their therapy, go to their counseling. Hey, you come through this program, you can get sufficient help, you can get jobs, you can come back and be a surviving, uh, energetic citizen of the city of Fort Worth. Share your testimony, bring somebody else up. But unless in the mindset change, we're gonna have a homeless problem. Thank you, thank you. And, and I appreciate those, those comments and statements, but just for the sake of time, let's limit to just a specific question that you have for one of, I think Bob Wade, do you want to answer something? Yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, the homeless, ha not having a house, is just one of the homeless problems. There are many others. And that's what she was addressing. This place right here, I've been associated with Union Gospel Mission for years, for years. The Black Chamber has partnered with Union Gospel Mission. They have a program now since they built this building they have a training program. Mm -hmm. They're training people with uh, uh, what are they called? forklifts and, and all those kinds of things, welding, mm -hmm. to get out people who were homeless to get a job. Mm -hmm. to, for, so I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a problem for sure. But as she said, it's a community problem. I, 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 when I speak at churches and they bring up the homeless, I said if one church would just take one homeless family to do, and it's hard. Now, if you think it's going to be easy, it's not. But if you take one church, take one homeless family, and you take care of that family, you see them through the all getting them those training programs, getting them where they got to go, get, getting them some housing. That's how you have to tackle it. But we want to drive by, occasionally maybe give a dollar to a guy on the corner. But, but I, I had a question. Uh, recently, I seen um, that you had signed up on the LGBTQ uh, commission, and I haven't seen a lot of enforcement with what Mr. Sanders did with the Race and Culture Task Force Commission. The equity that we need in the black communities, we need your support the same way you did the LGBTQ support. We need you everywhere, I mean, we need you. Every corner of District 8, the homelessness, the streets, the housing, the, the public housing, we need you. Yeah. We, we need you. Thank you. And, I, and I'll um, respond to that. And what she's talking about is the letter. Um, so we have the Human Relations Commission uh, that is appointed uh, by the mayor for work. Um, and during that meetings, they had discovered that there are a greater risk to the LGBT community uh, here and all over. And so what they did is they brought a resolution to establish a subcommittee to advise the commission of any LGBTQ issues, problems, circumstances, or whatever they may be. There was a council member too that had a problem with that subcommittee being established. And so with our city as urban and with diversity and inclusion, it is important that we leave not one single soul out of Fort Worth, whether you're black, brown, white, Asian, the list goes on, gay, straight, trans, uh, whatever you want to call it. You live in Fort Worth, you should have a great place to live. And I will also say all the recommendations that Bob Ray Sanders uh, and others did on the Race Culture Task Force, I have been one of, if not the only, main person that has pushed for each one of those things to be established. Number one of them, it was the Citizens Oversight Board. I pushed for it. I was, the actu I was actually the one who actually brought it to council. We voted the, on it, and the city of Fort Worth voted it down 5-4 a year and a half ago. I have recently 
to say that. Okay, I am of the opinion that this woman, Deborah Peoples, should be mayor of this city. I have to say it. And we didn't go. Be quiet, Deborah. I'm the old one. And it's a darn shame that we don't vote. And when people leave these houses all over our neighborhood and move to where else, whatever, move to where else they want to live, okay? Yeah. Then we lose political power. Because we're in South Lake and Carroll. They don't want us out there, y'all. Come on. They don't want us out there. Hurt you. Come on. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Mm. And and I and I will also, and I will tell you, it's 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 not just the LGBTQ. It's not just uh, um, police community relations, but it's all. But it's also uh, when we talk about subcontracting businesses, when we talk about uh, people getting their first share or a piece of the pie. Our equity has not been where it should be. And so you can check the record. The record will show that I have supported and not only supported, but being on the front, on the front line. We have seen it and we thank you. Thank you. You are seen fairly good. Thank you. Uh, Eden, how you doing today? Uh, my name is uh, Terrence Watson. I'm the president of the Glen Eaton Neighbor Association in Zing Hill. So I have a question about the new development at 4000 Campus Drive where there's a new gas station coming as of June 19th. Supposedly, there was no word that it was coming to our neighborhood or whatever. So I can know, what can you tell me about that new development? I didn't get a notice about it at all. And also, the development at 3700, um, I'm sorry, what's the VOA? 3700 Timberland with the VOA projects coming. So there's a lot going on right there in Genius on this Rolling Hills. So we got a lot going on in that little area right there. So I have a question about that 4000 the, the gas station retail that is coming to the corner already from Goodwill, across from Goodwill, the Family Dollars is right next to it. We have a U-turn that's happening right there in front of the Family Dollars. So there is a lot in that little stretch right there that is going on. So can you answer that question? Yes, I, I am aware of that property. And I will tell you, we see you, David. We got you. Just a moment. We'll go get to you. Um, Stacey, uh, Southeast, and I have had a meeting about that. And we're reaching out to the owner of that property. And I will tell you, uh, Chelsea and I was talking the other day, uh, there is a development that is requesting a zoning change for 4000 And so my question is, I'm not 100% sure that that gas station is actually coming um, because we just received another request for that same plot of land. So they just, they not already love it. I know, I'm very aware, I passed by it. And so I know there, there are some that's happening there with the VO, uh, Right, we're still in the process of that. And so I will get your contact once we get a sound creep. I've called, called 4,000 4, times already. I, don't know <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, okay. Well, but I'm telling you, to me to you, and that's why I come to these community meetings so I can hear that, and I appreciate you for that. And I will tell you, uh, Chelsea's doing a great job in the office, and she's been working to get to all of you uh, and so we'll get to you. Uh, I'll make sure I call you myself and set a meeting up, do, do coffee or whatever. Uh, right, please. Yes, maybe two more so that I don't want to hold you too long. Question, I don't, well, I don't know if this, how I would address this to you or how you could let me know how to proceed. So I'm mainly speaking about 76104, of course. Um, we have an issue with old raw grass. Uh, case in the freeways, well, into the communities alongside Rosedale and what's out. So, with Fort Worth being the 12th largest city here in the niche and consistently growing, we're doing a lot of development. For some reason, uh, we're not getting the the service of keeping the upkeep for us, the landscaping. Now, we've been told that we all have two contractors for the whole a full word. I'm not sure why we only have two contractors for 11 districts, but is there any way that we can propose to council that each district get their only contractor so that way none of the um, the, the areas though un, 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 uh, they won't go neglected? 
because we are building houses, as you know, we build houses. Right. Well, let me answer your question. How do we how do we do that? Like, how can we get that done? I don't know if it's a budget budget issue or what. Like, let me answer your question. Do we have anyone here that's overseeing the uh, grass cutting in Fort Worth? You are. Can you briefly uh, give us a, um, a answer to his question? And then we got two more other um, uh, two more other questions. Then there will. Uh, I'm sorry. Can he get the other mic? Because that mic is not mic'd up. So I want to make sure that uh, our uh, Facebook Live and those aren't uh, able to hear exactly what you're saying. Thanks. So you're absolutely correct. We only have two contractors right now. The city's going out back for bid. Uh, we we'll, should be having those contracts soon, and then we'll have uh, more contractors on on scene. That way, we can take care of the city of Fort Worth. But we are going back out for contracts. Okay. No, uh, no, 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 no. We got other people. They got to ask questions. We can. Act, you can talk to them probably after the meeting. No, wait, James. Be respectful of the meeting. Okay. Well, we'll do. I also do a future agenda item. And so we can see how many contractors we're going to have. Thank you so for that. We got two more questions that we got to uh, close out. We, I'm, I'll stay here as long as you want to stay here and ask questions, but we won't let other people. It's a football game, y'all. No, I want to make sure everybody. I talk to James all the time. Me and James are top. They're not looking to play off. Go ahead and check. You ain't looking. Okay, come on, guys. What else? Come on, let's stay in quorum. Come on. Okay, good afternoon. My question is, you, you're talking about all this development, but there's nothing in Stop 6. There's nothing in East Fort Worth. There's nothing in Southside. We don't have grocery stores. We don't have shopping. We don't have all our money is spent some other area. Then we find out that it was $370,000 moved out of Southside Community Center. So where are we going with this center? Because this is the heart. My children was raised here. We've got our shots from there. We've done everything out of Bethlehem Center, Southside community. But now you want to get it away? You're going to move it away? So who? why did we lose $370,000? And now you're talking about uh, moving it somewhere else? How are you going to... How are you going to help these people? This, this is our livelihood. We love being at this center. We do a lot. We do. But why was it moved from our center? So I'll, I'll answer the question. Um, again, as I articulated earlier, uh, this, the community center is still a conversation that we're having. We, the city of Fort Worth, has not selected to take away Southside Community Center. This is actually a request that has come to the city of Fort Worth. And as far as those dollars that was transferred, the city of Fort Worth, we do this all the time. We transfer dollars out of different pockets in order to take care of needs right away. Now. Those things that need to be done to Southside Community Center for those three hundred thousand dollars that you're talking about, I'm gonna get your information and actually figure out what was actually supposed to happen. What we have been doing with the Southside Community Center, we just rehabbed the entire bathrooms uh, and some other infrastructure. Unfortunately, the Southside Community Center and uh, which uh, our one of my city manager Fernando, who's actually retired at the end of this month, uh, is leaving. Um, we have done studies to show to see if we can actually fix or rehab that Southside Community Center. And the studies show that it's not feasible for us to re actually rehab that center. And so we're going to continue to make repairs so that we can use the facilities as we still have it on the grounds. Yeah. It's his turn. He had it. Let's go to him first. Let's go to him first because he, I'm sorry, out of respect for time. Okay. All right. Give it to her. Hi. I'm going to have a to come X1 is mouth right forward. It's him. I don't know why, but whenever I make a report of Kyle Grant's through a bullet hunt and check it, I'm walking later in the grass, still blown up. You went through, but the case is closed. We show it's clean was over yeah. mm -hmm. And nothing has been known. So that's a defect, or oh, I don't know if that's a tech I don't know. 
Yeah, that should be happening. Yeah, so it, it's been happening for a couple of years. I just called them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other comment I have is about homeless. I don't understand why people sleeping on the stairs that will lie there. Be I'm sure they lie like there. I mean, you got police officers and cold, but now they have it all being in and all that. And people all literally sleeping hard in front of the group. And finally, we have the Southside Community Center is the only center that is seriously cramming to the community. And come on. Um, you, Hazel Harley Peace is a one of the building. But if you're going to have a meeting, we've got to have it between eight and five. But then I'd like to find out why you can't make that more accessible. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for uh, that, uh, those comments. And I will tell you, uh, as you talk about the benches uh, uh, in that community, we, I, if I'm not mistaken, we first put the benches there. It was just a, sli- a solid uh, row. We had those issues come up. We took a rail and put it in between ha- uh, the bench in order to prevent people from laying down to sleep. And that's still not working. And so I would tell you, there are things that we're trying to do to ameliorate those issues. And we're short on uh, officers. And I would tell you, your NPO officer normally is during the daytime and some, I think, night, but we have to find out which South Side is doing. And so I know it's still like that your voices are not being heard. And I would tell you, if you contact our office, and what we do is we get your email and we'll email either if it's cold or if it's um, homeless, and we add you to that email so that you can track as well as we're tracking what happens. And so that works best for our office, but please continue to use the app. And if they close that thing, screenshot that and send that to me because that's a problem. What is that it? That's why we're here. That's why I Okay. How you doing, Dr. Nellis? First of all, I just want to say thank you for uh, all the hard work that you have done in uh, the city of Fort Worth that, you know, and I'm grateful that you did all this work. And uh, thank you. And I also just want to thank you for voting on our officers to get the pay raise. I, I think they deserve a pay raise and or cut to it no matter what those guys have done to pay raise. And so I think my last is that I, I just like to see you out in the community a little bit more, mingling with the people, building a relationship with our officers, and get up to Holland Hills. I'm not from Holland Hill, but people have complained to me from Holland Hills. Get up to Holland Hills and be a little bit more boss and try to help those people out. I'm out of here. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. That concludes our fireside chat. I appreciate you guys for coming out, but I want to give a 30 second wrap up to Barbara Sanders. Uh, anything you want to tell us, impart some wisdom, some knowledge, the whole nine yards or whatever, some take home advice. Fort Worth is your city. It's a great city, but it can be greater. And I like to second what the guy said here. I'm proud of what Chris Nettles has done since he's been in office. It ain't easy, y'all. I know that for a fact. And he keeps trying. So, Chris, publicly, we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And this young lady has a question. So can you see him after? Okay. And he'll answer until I give you a 30-second wrap-up. And you'll close us out. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank our officers, our cold officers, our city staff uh, for being here tonight. And you guys are doing a great job as well. And so uh, thank you again, uh, Dr. Williams, for uh, having us here, hosting us. Uh, here in your facilities. I'll stay here and ask some more questions. Uh, we have city staff that's still here as well. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. And it was live streamed, so if you want to go back and hear what we talked about, you can go on our social media at Councilman Chris Nettles. Y'all have a great night and a safe trip home.